Hi, today we'll be coding something starting from this animation. It's not going to be exactly the same because I want to showcase something a little bit different, but it is going to be very similar, so let's get started. As you can see, every group of dots is within a cell on a grid. So let's create that grid. We're going to have a grid element, and this grid is defined by a number of rows and a number of columns. So let's set those. So number of rows, let's say it's going to be four, and we're setting these smaller first off because I don't want to risk a browser crash. And then if something goes weird, then it's a lot easier to debug if we have fewer elements. So uh, we are going to increase the size of the grid later, but until then, let's leave it like this. Uh, we're also going to set the number of dots, seven, like the rainbow, and we are going to compute the total number of cells on the grid, which is going to be the number of rows times the number of columns. Okay, so having done this, here within a for loop, so let i going from zero all the way up to n, the total number of cells on the grid, uh, let's create those cell elements. And then here in a style attribute, we are going to set the number of rows as a custom property so we can pass it to the CSS. So if we modify it here, we don't need to make any changes to the CSS because it gets passed through the style attribute. Now, having done this, we are going to do the exact same thing for the rows and uh, for the columns and uh, the dots. So this is going to turn not into cows. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. Now, let's move here and let's start with setting a diameter for those dots, let's say half an M. And if you've seen my previous videos, then you know this part. On the body and on all the elements, set display grid. Yeah, if I could use a keyboard, that would be great. Now, on that grid element, we are going to set a grid template and we're going to have repeat the number of rows and at first we're going to use uh, just uh, that uh, diameter right and then we're going to move on to the number of columns columns not cows okay and for the cell elements we'll be setting box shadow just so that we can see the boundaries so something like this. Okay, now let's also set a grid gap here. Let's set it equal to that diameter at first, something like this. Uh, but you've seen that those cells are more elongated vertically. So um, we are going to set the row height to the number of dots times the diameter. And of course, we're going to need to put this within a calc, and that means interpolating it, all that stuff. So the number of dots multiplied with that diameter. Okay. Now let's also increase the column gap. Okay, much better. And something else I want to do here is uh, place self center. Okay, now let's uh, create those uh, dots. So we're going to take this and uh, add another loop here. This is going to go up to the number of dots. And of course, we're going to have a different loop index. So we, we're not going to have uh, I as well. This is going to be J. And here we're going to have our dot elements, right? Okay, so now we're going to take this loop and in a style element, we are going to be setting indices for those dots. So dot nth child, uh, here we're going to have j plus one. And it's plus one because the nth child index is one based as opposed to the loop index, which is zero based. So we're going to have index is that j. Okay, so having done this, on our dot elements, we are going to compute a ratio k, which is going to be 
that index over the number of dots. Okay, and having done this, we are going to set a background to an HSL value that uses a calc for the hue, and that's going to be k that uh, ratio times 360. Let's say we're going to have a saturation of 80 and luminosity of 65. And this is starting to look like something. Next step, let's set border radius 50%. Okay, now next we are going to make them overlap. So they're going to occupy the exact same cell. Basically, we're just going to have one cell. Uh, grid area, first row, first column one cell at the intersection between the first row and first column, and we don't want them to stretch. Uh, let's compute here a radius, and this is going to be half the diameter. Okay, let's collapse the grid for now. Right, and here we're going to set padding equal to that radius. Okay, and let's also set uh, no, not place self. Align is sufficient. So align self start because uh, the default is stretch. So now after we've done this, they don't stretch anymore. So uh, let's also set a percentage here. Let's say it's going to be uh, 5%. And now in the keyframes, uh, oscillate. So here we're going to have from 0% to that uh, percentage P. Um, transform none. And here we're going to go from 100% minus that percentage P to 100%. And here we're going to have transform translate. And here we're going to use a calc. So Uh, the number of dots times the diameter. Let's see it. Oh, um, yeah, of course, we need uh, to set uh, the animation property, right? And we need to set an animation duration. I don't really have uh, the power to mentally control it to animate otherwise. And here we're going to have ease in out, infinite, alternate. Let's see it. Okay, it goes one dot further. So here we're going to have the number of dots minus one actually. So now it should have the right range of motion. That's good. That's perfect. And now we're going to use as an animation delay, right, we're going to have a calc right here. And we're going to have that k times the animation duration. Let's see it. Okay, but the thing is, uh, we want the animations for all the dots to be started from the very beginning. So we're going to subtract one from this k. So like this. Okay, um, let's get rid of uh, this uh, cell part and um, on the body let's, if I could type that would be great. Let's set a background. Uh, okay, not quite black. We still want it pretty dark, but not quite black. Okay, now the thing is, we don't uh, have delay between cells. We only have delay between dots. So let's fix that. Uh, here, we're going to take that and just uh, copy paste it a couple of times. And here we're going to have the number of rows. Here we're going to have the number of columns. So we're going to take that and of course these are both going to be 
cell elements and here we're going to have n plus the number of columns times j and here we're going to have uh, no row the row index and here we're going to have every number of columns we're going to have a column index like that and here we're going to compute uh, a few things so first off we're going to compute a middle index so this is the arithmetic mean between the first index and the last index and we're going to have one per row and one per column so that's going to be a uh, half of the sum between the first index and the last index first index is zero last index is the number of rows minus one so this is basically going to be half of the number of rows minus one And then we're going to compute the absolute value uh, between the absolute value of the difference between this middle row index and the index of the current cell. So this is going to be so the row index of the current cell. Um, row and the cool thing is we don't even need to calc inside the sum max function because um, this really helps uh, with keeping clutter out now having done this we're going to do the exact same thing for The exact same thing for the columns. So um, there and there and there we're going to have column. Okay so having done this here we're going to have um, that absolute value for the column over the middle index for the column. Okay, so something like that. And you can see that we have delay in between the columns, but we don't have any delay in between the rows. So let's fix that as well. Yeah. I can't use a keyboard. <laughs> Pathetic. Okay, so now for the rows. And we can make things even more interesting. Now, if you saw it a bit earlier, let's uh, add that one more property that I want to add, mixed blend mode screen. And now it's going to restart the animation and you're going to see it. So you can see that we have some dots that don't animate, that aren't animated from the very beginning. And that's because we've uh, added these two more terms right here. So we're going to need to subtract more than one. We're going to subtract three. Okay, so this is going to fix it. Okay, now I promised you something that we're going to make this more interesting. So let's say that we're going to use something like this. Please don't crash. <laughs> okay, so you can see it's a bit laggy, but uh, at least it didn't crash, so that's good. I'm not going to tweak it any further. I'm going to leave it here. You can play with it. The original had 28 columns and eight rows. So you can increase it to that if you have a machine that allows it. Mine probably won't and I'm not going to push it any further. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, if you like the work that I'm putting out since early 2012 and you want me to be able to do more in the future, please consider supporting it. You can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon or if monthly support is not your style, there's the option of a one-time donation or you can make me happy with a gift of my wishlist. The links for everything, for this demo, for my Patreon, for my Amazon wishlist, for everything, they're going to be in the description. 
um, or you can at least share this to show the world what can be done with CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching and until next time.